Mount Shasta shoots above the northern California landscape. Dormant now, the stratovolcano in the Pacific Ring of Fire rages to life every 700 years or so. Like the earthen rumblings that spawn a volcano, the cadence of the Testa engine drumming to life on the 2012 Ducati Diablo Carbon is deep and visceral. With little traffic and loads of twisties, the Shasta area is a rider's paradise. So we challenge the mountain on board the carbon fiber version of the Ducati Diablo. Its CF treatment shaving off a claimed 11 pounds from stock. Showing restraint on the Diablo is the most difficult part of our climb up the Siskiyou Mountain Summit, the highest point on I-5. Even though we've softened power delivery to the 162 horsepower low setting in touring mode, the potent 1198cc engine has a super bike pedigree and wants to stretch its legs faster than a second gear, 55 mile per hour climb. Dropping out of the Siskiyous, we get the first unobstructed view of the mountain. Its peak, the stuff of legend and home to Skell, the spirit of the above world according to the Klamath tribe. Its shape is classic, triangular sides and jagged peaks. Little about the Diablo is classic. The 240mm rear, one of the only cruiserish traits. Single-sided swing arms, a small suspended tail section, traction control and multiple rider modes are not typical cruiser fare. The statue of a miner and his trusty donkey stand at the entrance to Wairika, the first town on I-5 south of the Oregon border. The California Gold Rush first brought settlers here, old town rising up from mining shanties. We break at the Wairika Rail Station, an idle Wairika Western passenger car, a grey ghost of past glory. Our journey continues through the tiny hamlets of Shasta City and Dunsmuir. Dunsmuir, home to the best water on earth, used to be an important hub in its role as a Southern Pacific Railroad Yard, where extra steam locomotives were added to trains heading north over the mountain passes. More seat time allows us to explore the touring potential of the Diablo Carbon. Its tank holds 4.5 gallons, but the low fuel light comes on early so we set a mark of 120 miles between stops. The body of the bike with its dual air scoops and a seat situated down and in helps shelter riders. The riding position is upright with a slight forward lean, placing little pressure on the wrists as a rider's arms sit out just below chest level. Mid-set controls have rider's knees bent almost parallel to the ground. At 80 miles per hour, buffeting sets in, so we lean forward and tuck into the tank. This also helps shift pressure points. The stock seat doesn't look it, but the scooped out design puts pressure on the bottom of a rider's glutes, so it's bearable for long stints. You're also stopping about every other hour for gas stops, which helps riders from getting fatigued as well. Exploring the roads outside of Railroad Park, we marvel at the feat of engineering Ducati accomplished. A bike with a 240mm rear tire shouldn't handle this good, but it does. With its combination of ABS, traction control, and variable riding modes, the motorcycle instills loads of confidence in its operator. And what other cruiser can you go from 0 to 60 miles per hour on in less than 3 seconds? With the granite spires of Castle Crags catching slanting rays behind us, we head back north on I-5 before the sun disappears west beneath the mountains. Deer and even bear have been known to stray on the road in this stretch, and we don't want to run into either. And while we love to hear the Diavel's engine as it revs through the power band, there's another symphony to be enjoyed when it settles into rhythmic repetition. Soon we're bidding adieu to the Wairika Dragon as we roll back up the Siskiyous, but not before carving up a few more sweepers on our way home aboard this wonderful piece of Italian engineering.